Okay. Well, happy Saturday morning to you all. It is uh, April 10th on a very cloudy, dreary, windy, somewhat cold uh, Houston morning. I don't know what's going on with the weather. Uh, our forecast today said uh, all sunny, but right now it's foggy and 68. And we don't have any uh, rain in the forecast, but man, I'm telling you, this feels like rain. It's very, very moist out here. We'll see how it plays. If I end up soggy, it's my own fault. Ugh. So let's get this going. I've got a work commute this morning for a little bit uh, after my breakfast meetup. A customer that has a Windows 10 machine, a Dell all in one that's decided to go toes up, doesn't want to run blue screen. Don't know, probably a failed Windows update. But not something that I can diagnose remotely, so I gotta make a house call. Uh, after that, I'm not sure what the day is going to hold for me. Maybe just riding. Let's see. Oh, it's chilly. I don't think that 68 temp is uh, accurate. If the bike, yeah, see, the bike is saying 67, and it's been sitting there warming itself up. So the temp is probably closer to the low 60s here. 63-ish, 64 maybe. It's a little nippy and very, very humid, moist. Feels good though. If it wasn't for the uh, ominous threat of. Uh, rain falling from the sky. This would be really pleasant riding weather this morning. So, hopefully the weather's going to work up and it'll be sunny like the uh, forecast says. Because it's nippy right now. I should have put on my over jacket. I'm backpacking it today because I have uh, my laptop and some uh, tools for the uh, service call uh, and then I've also got to stop by my warehouse on the way in and pick up uh, two other laptops uh, one not in a bag which I've got to stuff into this bag and the second one in its own bag that I'll have to swing over my shoulder so I don't have a way to haul gear on this bike yet so the plans are underway uh, we're starting to uh, coordinate routes and figure out what and when and where uh, for the cannonball in, uh, end of June, beginning of July. Uh, tentatively, we're going to be leaving crack of dawn on July 1st and start up that way. <clears throat> I'm actually pushing for a day or two before that, but we'll see how uh, Adrian and everyone else's schedule works out. Uh, if we can give ourselves a little more time, then... Uh, It'll make for a more leisurely pace up there if we have any mechanical issues or flat tires or whatever, then we're not under duress to get it done and get back on the road to make a deadline. Uh, I also wanted to do a part of the Blue Ridge Parkway up there in uh, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina area. Uh, it's a pretty long stretch of road and we're gonna be traveling it near Fourth of July holiday, so that's another reason why I'd like to get ahead of the holiday rush if I could. Uh, but you know, at any rate, I, I don't need to travel the whole thing you know, on a short schedule. So we might just do 100 miles or 200 miles of it, and then hit the other side highways and keep on trucking. I've been through most of those states uh, multiple times, but I've never been on the Blue Ridge. I've heard it's just gorgeous. And I kind of like the fact, ooh, hey, I'm going. Uh, I kind of like the fact that the speed limit is only 45 and there's no commercial trucks and all that. Um, the uh, drawback is going to be that you know, there'll be a lot of traffic out there at this time of year. It's like a slow road, even slower. Yeah, I don't know how the forecast is calling for sunny skies when it looks like this. Let's we'll see if they know what they are talking about.
<laughs> so as I put my signal on, but he nails the gas gas told you there. Nope. Sorry, not gonna accelerate me. I hit the GTFO button. So another one of the channels that I watch uh, occasionally is uh, Riding the Ozarks, I believe is the name, Riding in the Ozarks. And uh, he's pretty much a Harley channel, uh, you know, bigger V-twin cruisers. Uh, but he's got an upcoming review or ride review on the uh, Rebel DCT. So I was kind of interested to hear his take on it compared to some of the other Harleys that he's ridden and reviewed. It's definitely a uh, smaller, more compact bike as far as the CD competition. So I'm curious to see how other owners, riders, uh, feel about the ergonomics, especially taller riders. I think the leg position is probably going to be a little uncomfortable for him. So, I'm absolutely sure that the aftermarket is going to have uh, answers for that and you know, put some forward controls on this thing. Uh, I would imagine that's going to have to come with a new rear brake line relocating the uh, rear brake reservoir further forward or potentially just a different brake pedal, you know, rear brake bar, pedal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's another issue that uh, I've kind of noticed in another buddy of mine that owns one up in the Austin area, Derek. He said that his foot is always kind of resting on the uh, on the brake pedal and he doesn't like it. He wants to adjust that brake, but there's no real throw adjustment to this thing up or down. So that's another hot item for the aftermarket is an adjustable brake lever for this guy. I'm sure a forward control set will probably include that because you're gonna need it for adjusting the foot angle. So I'll swing by my warehouse here and pick up the uh, two laptops that I need and roll over to my breakfast meat. Okay, so <laughs> I'm uh, messenger bagging it and backpacking it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to turn and keep the camera over there. <laughs> this is going to be uncomfortable. Luckily, I don't have too far to go. Breakfast place is only about uh, three or four miles from here. can stand up for bumps on this bike. Uh, it's just a little tricky because you have to. That asshole almost hit me. Jesus. Never even looked. Complete shyster. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Uh, you can stand on this bike, but it's a little tricky. You've got to pull forward on the bars to hinge yourself upward. So it can be done. It's just a little clumsy. Uh, and of course, pulling up on the bars, you're going to potentially alter your steering angle. So. Probably should have cut through the parking lot because these guys are going to be sitting here forever. <clears throat> and I'm a little too wide to scoop through that spot. The, uh, the CRGs make the bars wider, obviously, but you can fold those in if you want to split through or filter. Uh, but the foot pegs on this thing set out quite a stretch. So I've gone uh, squirting by cars a couple times and just about dragged the curb with the uh, right side peg. It's pretty wide. The front suspension handles those sharp step bumps really well. The rear, not quite as well, but Seems to be okay. Uh, maybe today, if I've got time, I will do the uh, zip tie test and start tuning my suspension a little bit. Can I steal the front spot again? <laughs> yes, I can. It's a to-go spot, but it's gonna go. It's gonna go in my belly. That's where it's going. Ow! It's 
to, ah, that's always a problem too, backing this thing up where that peg is placed, you bash your shin, I've done that a few times, owie, all right, I've arrived, it's breakfast time, we'll catch up with you all in a bit. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> I, uh, I finished up my uh, breakfast and started vlogging and doing my normal talk away routine while I'm riding and uh, got here and realized I never pushed the record button on the camera. Derp! So, what I was saying <laughs> the first time through, uh, I forgot something here at the warehouse and I had to come back. Uh, I needed some software and a portable drive that I left behind. Anywho, uh, so I was talking about uh, riding in the Ozarks channel and his upcoming review on the uh, 1100 DCT Rebel and uh, oddly enough that was today. Uh, I didn't remember that that was uh, a premiere video that he was doing today and uh, there was a live Q&A while the video was playing and that was pretty neat. I jumped in there and uh, he gave me a shout out on his channel and in the video which uh, I didn't realize or anticipate so that was really nice of him. Thank you sir. Uh, I will make sure that I do the same on mine. Uh, I don't know when I'll be posting this uh, vlog but hopefully I'll do it soon so it's still kind of fresh. Uh, in the Q&A there were quite a few uh, good questions uh, on ergonomics and uh, features of the DCT and that sort of thing and uh, one of them was uh, does the bike have hill hold or you know if uh, if you're stopped on a hill will it roll backwards yes it will uh, this bike doesn't have uh, an advanced IMU in it that senses uh, elevation or lean angle or anything like that as far as I know uh, so it does not have hill hold. But the other question was this. When you're sitting still, does it move? No. You have to actually give it throttle before the clutch starts to engage. Uh, it's ride by wire, so the DCT knows when you've cracked the throttle open and that starts to engage the clutch. Uh, what else? Um, what else is... I, I set my beeline to uh, tell me where I'm going and it's not telling me where I'm going. Let me check that real quick. Um, what else? There were a couple of ergonomic questions and kind of one of my questions was for uh, taller riders, uh, larger riders. Uh, he mentioned it in the video comments and uh, possibly in the video as well, his uh, height and weight. I didn't catch his weight, uh, but he said he's 5'9" and he thought that the uh, ergonomics were okay but the knee position is a little tight and that's kind of what I had suspected. Uh, let me get my beeline running here. Connect. Oh, I got my Bluetooth off. Derp. My problem. My fault. My fault. Done. Done. Technical difficulties. Cue the... Uh, ah, there it goes. I was going to say cue the Jeopardy music here. Uh, okay, which way do I go? I go that way? Yeah, let's go that way. So, back to uh, taller riders. I think anyone over probably right about the six foot mark is probably going to be about as tall as you'd want to be for the Rebel. Um, oh, before I take off. See, this whole time I've been sitting here in gear, uh, I went to hit D and it didn't click, so I'm still in gear. So, does it roll or creep while you're sitting still? No, it does not. Uh, I'll let this guy go because he's weaving all over the road. Um, I think six footers uh, might do okay on this, but that's about the upper reach. Uh, anybody that's much taller than that, I think your knees are going to be up so high they're going to be folded up around the tank and uh, it's just not going to be comfortable. So when the aftermarket finally comes up with some forward controls for this thing, it'll probably help out the leg position a lot. Uh, I will probably get some forward controls for it. I've never really been a fan of the full forward, you know, leg stretched out position. I kind of like the mid controls, but they need to be a little further forward. So what else can I say? Uh, the live stream and the, the Q&A that he did after it were great. I like that. Uh, that was neat. And again, thanks for the shout out. Uh, I didn't really want to 
uh, <laughs> monopolize anybody else's channel. Uh, I was really curious uh, from a, the perspective of a Harley owner to see what his thoughts were on the the Rebel uh, and uh, you know ergonomics and overall impressions, you know, rideability, that sort of thing. And he seemed to like it. Uh, it's got a lot of power, uh, a lot of torque, and it's down low, very accessible. So look at these geniuses. Like I say, it's got a lot of torque. It'll really go. So what else? Uh, as far as a long haul tour, uh, I don't know how well that's going to work out for a lot of people. Until there's luggage and some other, you know, creature comforts on it. Uh, riding in the Ozarks didn't mention that uh, he had any problems with the rear suspension. In fact, he said that it felt kind of okay to him. Uh, I don't remember what he said his weight is, but I find the rear suspension a little harsh, uh, especially over pavement ripples and seams and stuff like that. So, I'm not going to play with you people. Got a rig speeding up trying to box me in? I don't think so. So I'm going to try to do my uh, suspension tuning this weekend, maybe today if I've got time. Uh, my Kaufman Shorty exhaust is also supposed to be here today sometime. Uh, it was actually supposed to be delivered yesterday and did not show up, thanks to the uh, U.S. Postal Service. Uh, so maybe I'll try to swap the exhaust and do the... Uh, zip tie test on my rear shocks to see if I'm using all the travel or not. If I'm not using all the travel, then I need to back down the preload. If I am using all the travel, then I got to increase it and that'll hopefully fix the uh, harshness on some of the bumps. Okay, Beeline, where am I going? It shows my turn is left in a half a mile, huh? Did I miss my turn? All right, I'll go that way. And see if it knows what it's doing. So, am I taking a left or a UE? A la UE. Uh, I think it's just left. We'll find out. It would be nice for uh, U-turns if it would show a U-turn indication. So maybe that'll be available in some of the newer firmware updates or something like that. Uh, I've noticed it does similar routing that uh, Google does sometimes. It says, take a left and then take another left. Well, just say U-turn, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> it's so much easier to know that you're turning a 180 instead of a left and a left, because uh, when you get dedicated U-turns, that uh, can save a little bit of your life there. Okay, so it's just saying left. We'll find out. Go, go, go. Keep rolling. Yep, okay, so it's saying forward, and we'll keep going forward. 0.8 mile, all right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the uh, uh, Riding in the Ozarks, great channel, great uh, video. I really enjoyed his video because he had a lot of uh, alternate camera angles and flybys and stuff like that. And from a content creator's perspective, uh, I know how hard that is to do and uh, all the extra editing and everything that goes into it and all the B-roll and everything. So uh, good job. Very good job, sir. Every time I go out on one of my road trips, I take extra cameras with me and I think, yeah, I'm going to set it up on the side of the road and do some flybys and this and that. I never do it. <laughs> it's, it's such a pain in the ass to set those up. You know, you have to go way ahead of where you want your scenic shot to be. And then you set the thing up on the side of the road and then you drive away and leave it there. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, somebody going to take my camera? Is it going to get knocked over? Is it going to get run over? And then you drove, you do your flyby, and then you gotta stop and turn around and go get it. <laughs> it's just a pain. Okay, so right here, I think, unless I just missed it. 
I may have just missed it. I don't know. It's over here somewhere. Let's go this way. Do, 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 do. Let's see if I can. Every now and then in the shadows, the uh, little beeline is kind of hard to read. Oh, that was another question in the uh, comments, is how legible is this display uh, on the Rebel? It's great. Uh, the only time I've ever had any problems reading it is when sunlight is shining directly off of it, and it's the glare. But you're going to get that with any gauge if the, uh, uh, the sun is shining right on it. I'm not going to see what you're doing. So, where am I going? I guess I'm going this way. It's saying left, so I'll go left. I must have missed the turn a minute ago. Okay, it's saying turn right. All right, I'll turn right. So, when you get really close, it swings the arrow over. It's just not very proactive about that, so you gotta be paying attention. If you're moving faster, it goes, whoop, turn right right here. Okay, third of a mile. Let's see what it, if it gets me there. That was that uh, in-between speed thing right there I was talking about earlier. If you're right at the top or the bottom of a, a speed range between where the DCT wants to shift, you end up with a little bit of on-off lash and lurch. Not a big deal. But what I've learned to try to do is I brace my thumb real tight in against the uh, housing here, and that... Uh, prevents your hand from wiggle jiggling the throttle a little bit because uh, it's pretty easy to make it jiggle up and down. It says it's 300 feet. Huh? <laughs> left? Okay. Well, it's a dead end. I hope I'm going left. Do, 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 do. Okay, well, I'll shut it down now. I want to reveal where this person lives and uh, I'll catch up with you all after my service appointment is done. Catch you later. Okay, so the service call is still in progress even though I'm not there. <laughs> the, uh, the silly Windows bug, uh, it has totally corrupted Windows to where it won't even recover from its own restore points, so I had to do the reset this PC option, which reinstalls the OS and hopefully leaves all the user files intact. So we're going to find out, uh, but that reinstall is going to take two to three hours, and I told him, you know, there's really no point in me sitting around there babysitting it. Just call me when it's done, and we'll take it there from there, just to do a remote session. Uh, anyway, so I'm headed back home for now. I'm not sure which uh, way I'm supposed to get out of here. My beeline is run out of battery. My fault. I haven't charged it in like three weeks. So I will just wander around. Oh, it is a nice day for riding. A little breezy, but uh, the temperature has gone uh, up considerably. And mid 70s high 70s gauge on the bike here says 80 it's probably a little optimistic it feels good out here will crest uh, actually will crest will take me where i want to go let's filter up shall we will crest will take me over to 10. Hey, green light for me. So, I've been keeping an eye on the economy of the bike, as I always do. Uh, oh, wrong one. Consumption, current consumption says 66 miles to the gallon. Let's look at my average consumption, shall we? Trip A. Average consumption A. There we go. 37.2. Trying to watch the road. Um, 
it seems like my average on the bike uh, right now with my mixed city highway kind of riding is uh, about 41, 42 miles to the gallon, somewhere in that ballpark, which is good. Uh, it's kind of to be expected with a 1100cc bike. Uh, I haven't done any extended highway only runs yet to know how it is on longer hauls. Uh, I think the highest I've seen out of it is around 46. Uh, and that's running premium unleaded. Now, one of my viewers, uh, owners of a DCT, uh, commented back to me saying he has the same bike, and uh, he's been running just, I think, normal, you know, low grade or maybe mid grade in his, and he said it seems to run fine, and he wanted to know if there was any difference in economy. Uh, I don't know yet. That's a good question. So, uh, when I get it out on a road trip, I plan to do... Uh, a full tank or two with premium and then I'll step down to uh, mid-grade. I don't think I want to run low grade in this because it's got high enough compression that it should be able to make use of mid-grade a little bit better. Um, so I'll run a full tank of premium uh, through it and then a couple of full tanks hopefully at the same speed same conditions uh, on mid-grade and we'll see what the uh, differences look like. It's windy. <laughs> These flags are ripping. It's a windy day. It's coming out of the northeast, it looks like. About 20. I keep meaning to look up that stat. What is a gale? Uh, nautical term, gale force winds. What is gale? How many knots is that? I need to look that up. Because Houston is very windy and it's always blowing here. It's not uncommon for us to have wind advisories for uh, larger vehicles, you know, high profile vehicles, stuff like that on highways. Uh, we usually don't see a wind advisory until the winds have gotten up to 30 miles per hour steady, uh, but we frequently have uh, you know, gusts that are well beyond that without a steady rating. up on the highway, especially our elevated highways here, it's not uncommon at all to be out there with uh, 30 plus mile an hour winds hitting you laterally. So hopefully when I get home I'll have my uh, Kaufman shorty exhaust waiting for me. I have a few more accessories uh, that should be delivered today for the little CT125. I got some uh, driving light mounts that uh, fit on my crash bar, 7 8 inch. Uh, bar mounts. Also, I'll try to put that thing back together. I haven't finished the uh, uh, front guard and everything, but I'd like to get the middle of the bike put back together, so I need to do the electrical wiring for the driving lights and uh, put those mounts on there. I'll get part of my tasks done for the CT. That's a road hazard. Flat tire. With all the riding that I do, I've been blessed with having very few flat tires uh, on bikes. I mean, I've had plenty over my career, but with as many cars as you see off the side of the road on the highways here in Houston, uh, I'm glad that I'm not one of those uh, more often than I am. Once every couple of years I'll have a flat uh, and usually the ride-on tire sealant will take care of that for me uh, or the uh, you know, I'll have to stop and use my patch and plug kits whatever so I, I haven't been stranded anywhere because of a flat tire in a long long time. Occasionally you do have to uh, call a wrecker or whatever. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious to hear that Kaufman shorty on this thing. I think those D-cell uh, blips are going to sound great. <laughs> okay, I'm going to piss off a lot of people here.
why is it that Harley riders incessantly feel that they have to sit there at lights or whatever, brum, 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 just sitting there revving the throttle? <laughs> I don't get that. Diesel blips, yes, I get, but sitting there just being an obnoxious ass revving up your engine at stoplights, why? I didn't do that even when I owned a bunch of big nasty bikes, you know, VMAX, and I've owned a couple of Harleys. I never just sit there and brum, 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 brum. Yeah, okay, it's still running. You don't need to check it every three seconds. <laughs> uh, get it. This is that overt show of aggression or something. I don't know. I don't get it. Now watch, I'll start doing it when I get a lot exhaust on this thing. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to swap the exhaust, if it's there, hopefully, and uh, just go out for a ride on the back roads. The weather's nice today. I have more work waiting on me, but uh, I'm not motivated to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Procrastinator's motto. Why do today what you can put off until tomorrow? And it looks like we've got a Honda Super Cub sitting over there. That's a Honda Super Cub, nice. And a something, a cruiser, can't tell what it is. It's like a shadow. Somebody's got themselves a little red Super Cub. Yeah, I should uh, jump on my Super Cub and go back over there, try out the coffee and say howdy to another Cub owner. I think I might do that. I might do that. Socialize a bit throw a few shameless plugs for my uh, YouTube channel out there. <laughs> uh, that'd be funny if it's a channel subscriber. One of my craziest channel subscriber stories uh, is when I took my daughter, my littlest one, on uh, a little ride over to a neighborhood park in the adjacent neighborhood, and there was a young boy there, maybe, I don't know, I'm guessing 11 or 12 years old, and he came over and he was asking me questions about the... Uh, the Riker, super cool kid, uh, real eager to learn about the Riker, that was neat. And I said, I've got a YouTube channel uh, where I do a lot of these ride videos. And he said, are you Quasimotard? <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. And he said, I've been watching your videos. <laughs> so I have a, a, a preteen motorcycle enthusiast uh, that was already a subscriber and he was just tickled pink to meet me that was pretty neat i'm not famous i'm nobody i'm just a guy that likes to ride motorcycles met a fellow motorcycle enthusiast that hasn't even gotten into his prime yet good for him that's why i try to keep a lot of my uh, content on the channel family friendly I try not to drop too many f-bombs and curse words and everything else because you just never know who's watching be a bad influence. I don't even know if my camera's still recording. I'm probably talking to the air. <sighs> yeah, I'll swap out the batteries on this camera and uh, jump on the little Super Cub, go back to that coffee place. See if maybe that uh, Cub owner is as crazy as I am. See if they want to join into the Cannonball Run. <laughs> What I love about all of the comments and the uh, the people out there are the the negative naysayers that just have to speak their mind on the channel. You know, you're an idiot. You're don't you know what a little motorcycle can do and what it can't do? <laughs> Eat my shorts. Watch the evidence. It can do anything you want it to do. It's just a matter of focus and determination. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to end the vlog here and go uh, swap bikes. Thanks for tagging along if my camera is still recording. And uh, I'll catch you on the next installment. <laughs>